Kevin, you want to hit the um, volume a little bit? Um, Jackie, say a little something so we can volume test you. <laughs> so, awkwardly, right when you're drinking. That coffee is delicious. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, I think that's pretty good. Does that sound good to you guys? Yeah. Great. All right. Um, so, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here for this conversation with uh, a projected Jackie Sibley's jury, who's right behind me. Uh, we also are going to be live streaming this event on New Play TV, which is a program of HowlRound and the Center for Theater Commons. Um, so there might be some people watching online while we are here in the room, and it's possible we might get some questions over Twitter, so we've got some folks um, monitoring that front. Um, my name is Ilana Brownstein. I'm the director of new work at Company One Theater here in Boston. And uh, right above me is uh, Jackie Sibley's Drury, our playwright, who is currently in New York. Um, to my side here is Summer Williams, our director. And uh, at the end of the row here is Ramona Ostrowski, the dramaturg. And uh, Ramona, Summer, and I are all on staff. We're part of the collective at Company One Theater. Company One is 15 years old this year. We uh, produce here in Boston. And um, our mission is to change the face of Boston theater, to tell stories on stage that reflect the complex diversity of our own city and that have some social question uh, at the core of the play. So um, obviously this play is uh, pretty good at that. Uh, <laughs> we can talk about that at length today. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a bit of a conversation, um, Jackie and I, as well as Summer and Ramona, and we're going to um, talk a little bit about what, uh, what Jackie was doing as she wrote the play, what some of her ideas were, um, and what she's doing now. And then we're going to open it up for conversation with you, and you'll be able to ask Jackie questions. You can ask us questions about Company One and about the production process. You can ask Summer and Ramona specifically about what it was like in the rehearsal room. Um, and at some point, the actors will come up and join us, and we'll take a moment to acknowledge them when they arrive. So, um, hi, Jackie. How's it going? Good. And hello Good. to our uh, online friends, uh, anybody who might be joining us on the live stream. Uh, for those of you who are joining us on live stream, uh, if you're watching it as it's happening, you can tweet at us with the hashtag new play, and we'll see it. Um, you can also tweet uh, at company underscore one or at Arts Emerson if you want to talk to us directly. So um, Jackie Sibley's Drury is uh, a playwright um, who got her uh, MFA at Brown University and is currently um, not here, though she would like to be. Um, I will say there was a small dental emergency that required her to stay at home. So, uh, but we are really lucky that we have Skype and, uh, and there she is. So, uh, let's see if I can make this uh, the full screen. Hey, that's better. Hi, come on in and join us. Um, so, Jackie, uh, I wanted to ask you to start um, us off by giving us a sense of, of how you came to playwriting. What is it about this form that attracted you? Um, were you always a playwright? Did you come to it late? Um, what was that for you? Um. I think that I didn't come to playwriting, it didn't feel early. <laughs> um, I started off as an actor, as I think most people that work in theater um, do, because mm -hmm. I, I mean, like, you, no one really has the opportunity to write a play in their elementary school, but everyone gets to be in a play in elementary school. So um, I, um, I was I acted a bunch in college um, and moved to New York and uh, realized that I could not that I was not uh, really cut out for that kind of life. Um, it's like I feel like I like looked at the first um, like uh, advertisement for headshots and saw how expensive they were and was like, nope, nope. nope. <laughs> um, so I. Um, I, I just sort of lived in New York and just kicked around and like helped friends with shows and did all kinds of um, odd jobs and um, started writing um, for, or started writing mostly for myself mm -hmm. and then um, eventually realized that I really liked using um, characters to explore ideas and um, ended up applying to graduate school because I felt like I needed someone to tell me that I had learned how to be a playwright and like given me some sort of 
I don't know, playwright. Oh yeah, I guess it's called an MFA, which is like <laughs> tells you that you're allowed to be a playwright. Um, and so, that, so I, I think I came to it um, slowly and organically, um, but. Uh, oh wait, hold on. I never. Okay, we're good. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, I think that Skype was like, you've answered the question, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to pause for one second because I think our actors are here. Um, actors, if you'd like to come in, give them a chance to say hi. Come on in. Fabulous. Thanks for coming, guys. Um, great. So, uh, okay, so you came to, to uh, playwriting through acting. Can you talk a little bit about how it is uh, you came to write this play? Um, we have a couple of things in our program notes about this, but uh, everybody who's sitting in this room pretty much just was handed their program as they walked out. So they may not know some of this stuff already. So if you can talk a little bit about um, what was the genesis for this story for you? Um. I uh, uh, was trying to research a very different play um, where I thought um, sort of a play based around this actor who is um, the son of a German woman and an American GI. Um, and he always plays an American GI in all of these sort of like 80s Fassbender movies. Um, I, not, I don't know why I thought that would make a good play, but <laughs> side story. Um, but uh, the... Um, so I, I was just trying to find more information about him, and I just Googled black people plus Germany to see what would come up. Um, and there was like, a, a bunch of hits about a genocide, um, the Her Herrera and Makwa genocide. And so I wasn't, um, uh, I hadn't been familiar with it at all. I didn't know that um, Germany had committed a genocide before World War II. I didn't know that Germany had any um, African colonies. I didn't realize that like um, any of that had happened, and I was. Um, I guess this is this is like it's really arrogant, but like or like how surprised I because I I was like I'm not an idiot. I've taken a history class. Like I know a little bit. Hold on, she'll come back. Don't worry. Here we go. About um, at least like so. Um, I started doing research about the genocide um, and. Um, then went to graduate school and sort of was like sitting on this stack of information mm -hmm. um, and tried to write a play about the Herrero genocide as my graduate student thesis. Um, and that play was really terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> yay, terrible place. Um, <laughs> like that. Um, or it just, um, uh, I had like a, a like a reading of it in the middle of a semester, and I was like, "Oh my god, what? <laughs> oh no! Um, uh, how am I going to graduate? <laughs> I'm never going to get a paper that tells me I'm allowed to be a playwright. Oh no!" <laughs> um, so I um, uh, freaked out, and then I um, got more and more interested in the the ways that I felt as though the play was failing. Um, But I, th I thought that it was um, not actually successful. Don't worry, it'll come back. Um, so I uh, then sort of um, introduced this meta-theatrical element, <laughs> um, the big M word, and um, that uh, allowed uh, a group of actors to, to, to struggle with similar things to what I felt I was struggling with and trying to capture this story. Mm. So uh, your development process uh, obviously began with the, with the failed play and then moved on to the version that uh, you submitted to, um, to the Ignition Festival. Uh, uh, and can you talk a little bit about um, how you got from that first version of the play, which had a very different ending from the one that uh, those of you who are sitting in this room saw tonight, um, how did you track the path? Um, and what and can you talk about what the differences were um, in in the first draft 
versus now? Um, I think that the um, uh, when I when I was in graduate school, producing the first draft of the play that um, you saw that were that that was at this festival in Chicago. Um, uh, in graduate school, in the sort of workshop production thing that we did, which means just like there was designers and stuff, mm -hmm. but we only produced it for like two or three shows. Right. Um, uh, the, the play had like slightly different endings, like every day of tech and <laughs> like of the production. And, um, and I, I, I was having so much trouble figuring out how to end this crazy or like what happens after this moment of where the play breaks. Um, and I tried a variety. I don't know why I'm so like so much a part of the, this process was just like failing miserably and publicly over and over again. Um, but it was it was like different. Um, we tried different things. We tried having a moment where the actors like sort of walked forward and said their names, their like actual names. Um, but that ended up sort of feeling like a weird PSA for like some sort of disease from the 90s. Like it just was like awful. Um, and, so, and, and I realized um, that, um, so I started, I did um, some workshops of the play with um, the director, Eric Ting, who directed um, the, the first production of the play in Chicago and the second production of it in New York. Um, and he and I had a really close collaboration. And um, uh, I remember doing a workshop uh, in Chicago in the middle of a blizzard that like about three people saw because of the blizzard and um, trying a, a, the very first version, iteration of the ending that um, that was what you guys mm. experienced and had been work have been working with, mm. um, and um, and there was something about uh, sort of uh, giving a lot of uh, opportunity and no language, like opportunity for um, the actors to have a, a a a reaction to the moment before the end of the play. Mm. Um, and there was something about it that just felt right because um, any tr trying to um, sort of have a resolution or a, a more traditional resolution to the play felt a little bit like um, felt a little bit offensive to the to the to the shit <laughs> that's drenched up in the play. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, any like any sort of even like a really like sad ending felt like um, saying that like. Oh, it's racism is sad. Genocide is sad. I feel sad. Great. I can leave and go get a sandwich. And I um, wanted to uh, sandwiches are delicious, but I wanted to. Um, I think it's sandwiches. Um, but I wanted to um, allow for um, a different kind of interaction with the ideas in the play. Hmm. The ends. So, uh, for those who um, who don't know the original ending. Um, also, had, it had some more, in some ways, some more catharsis, I think, for both the actors and the audience, mm -hmm. um, that it, 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 uh, it sort of found some places where maybe the audience was able to walk out and feel like, oh, that was rough, but okay, we're going to soldier on. And I think now, for the ending, and for those who are watching um, on our live stream who maybe don't know the play, um, it ends in a very non-traditional way. Um, in which there isn't a curtain call, per se. Uh, um, certainly the actors appear later and we acknowledge them whenever they arrive in the, in the lobby, but in the space it is a, a place where there are still questions um, and it feels in some ways unfinished. Can you talk about, um, so you and Eric worked to, um, to get to, to this version and I think it's, this is the same version that was at Soho Rep last year. Um, for you, as you were thinking about how the audience leaves the experience of this play, which is, um, has such drastic pendulum swings between uh, comedy and, and some really dark places. Um, what were some of the important things for you as you were thinking sort of as both a playwright and as an actor um, originally uh, to sort of get to this version of the play? I think, um, I think for me a lot of it is based in um, in my own experience of, of seeing plays and of being, um, um, or I think uh, I I can be a, a, a very um, a deferential person mm -hmm. and nervous person, and so um, 
when I am when I personally am made uncomfortable in a situation, I um, want to uh, make myself feel better and make the other person that made me uncomfortable feel better sort of immediately. And um, by like um, making a joke, laughing the situation off, make uh, pretend like being ironic about it. Um, and I wanted to free the um, the the audience and the performers of that need to make everything okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause it's like, it's, uh, um, it's not, it's, it's just not okay. <laughs> um, and I think that um, uh, sort of allowing that was something that was really important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and now I've made myself a little bit uncomfortable, so I don't remember exactly what the question is. <laughs> um, no, that's fine. That's actually, I think you answered the question. So um, uh, I'd like to take an opportunity to begin to open this up to uh, our audience, our actors, um, our collaborators, Summer and Ramona, um, and give them a chance to ask you some questions. Uh, and, and maybe vice versa. If you have any questions for our audience, you're also welcome to ask them. Um, so I, I'd like to start with, um, do, you, do either of you have anything you want to start with? Any questions that you that are bubbling up? It's okay if you don't. We can also stop and listen for a little while. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, you can ask anything you'd like about um, what you saw. You can um, just talk about uh, your feelings about the piece. You can direct questions directly to Jackie. Um, it's up to you. I'm going to turn this around, maybe, so that uh, maybe I'll do th- maybe I'll do this, so that. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Skype is so weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now I feel the need to like play with the weird like where. <laughs> So we'll do that. Um, Any questions? Yes, please. I have a question for Summer, the director. Great. What? So we talked about how the ending was very kind of uh, like open-ended and like let people sit in the discomfort. Mm -hmm. What direction did you give the actors for what to do with that? Great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to restate the questions loudly so everybody can hear them and so Jackie can hear them. Uh, This is a question for Summer uh, about the ending. What was the, as a director, how did you uh, sort of navigate um, helping the actors find their way through that that ending of the play? It's awkward because they're in the room. (laughs) (laughs) Don't don't say anything, guys. (laughs) Um, So uh, one thing I, one thing I said was, uh, there's only so much of this that is directable, right? There's only, like, we're trying to get to the center of something. I can only talk you around the center, and you have to figure out how you're going to enter yourself. Um, I, throughout the process, um, have been asking them to be really transparent and really naked and to be vulnerable enough to be the most naked in that moment, especially when it's difficult. Um, There are things that are very specific that have to happen, right? Um, One, three, and five can't notice four too soon, right? That's a very practical thing. Um, Four has to reset the space in some way, shape, or form. And there are critical pieces that he needs to kind of make contact with um, and engage with so that we in the space can feel that moment, right? It's important for us to watch him start to break down the wall. It's important for us to uh, see him pick up the chain, pick up the paper, um, to take down the noose. Uh, It's important to watch him pack that stuff up in the chest. Um, Outside of that, it's them. And it's what happens in that space, their feelings, in that moment um, with each other and with all of you. And what you, you being the audience, do or say in that moment greatly influences what that moment is. So there are times when um, uh, actor four, played by, well, Mark. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, There there are times when uh, 
uh, I've seen people extend their hands to him. I've seen people hug him. I've seen people speak to him in the moment when he's trying to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that is, is something that he has to deal with in the moment, right? Um, and be open enough to allow himself to feel that. Um, so it's a tall order. It's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing about this that is at all easy for them. Thank you for that question. Joe, one of our actors has a question. <laughs> I'm going to um, say that louder so that just to make sure that Jackie hears it. Um, uh, so Jackie, there's a question for you from uh, one of the actors, um, Joe, who was uh, saying that in the rehearsal space, they had to make a, a way for it to be okay for them to be offensive and to say the wrong thing so that they could um, come to terms with one another as actors through the text and through the process. And he was wondering for you as a writer, what was it like um, allowing yourself to have your name on a piece in which um, so much difficulty uh, takes place between these people who seem uh, very real, I think, uh, to, to the audiences? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, I, um, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think that, uh, I think that it's uh, in that way, um, or like I, I get to feel incredibly optimistic and um, um, like positively hopeful about um, um, the people, the artists involved in making the, the, the play happen since so much of it is dependent on the direction, on the performers themselves. Um, and I think that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize as I was writing the play, I didn't totally fully realize that it was going to be produced. Like I was writing it, um, like I didn't, like I honestly didn't think about it at all. I wouldn't think about it. Um, so that was dumb. Um, but, uh, uh, I, I think that um, what, I've, what, I've, what I've come to really appreciate and respect is that as much as the play um, sort of like mocks the process of like a devised collaborative theater company. Um, um, it also like forces uh, forces groups of individuals to create a collaborative and devised theater company yeah. and be successful at it, um, much more successful than the characters are, while also hewing very closely to who the characters are. Mm. Um, so it's like a super ironic compliment, I guess, <laughs> to theater. Um, and I think that. Um, I realized that, like, uh, um, and I and I wasn't there for um, the rehearsal process at Company One. Obviously, you were, you know that. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but when um, I, I was involved in previously rehearsal processes, and it was um, I was talking about this with Eric Ting uh, actually yesterday, where um, we talked about how. Uh, even the audition process was really different for, especially for him, because he has directed a lot at a bunch of regional theaters where you like have actors come in and read a part of the play. That's a normal way to audition people, <laughs> like come in and sing a song. Um, and for us, we had people come in and we had an interview um, where we just sort of asked them, <laughs> uh, maybe assaulted them maybe, uh, with personal questions. Um, to sort of, because 
I, I, I firmly believe that, um, that strangely the only requirements for the performers in the piece are um, that, uh, that there's three white actors, that there's three black actors, that all the actors are good at, um, um, that are, are, are smart people that can um, empathize with a character. Like I don't think that, that someone has to be five foot two or like have like medium olive skin. Like there's no um, uh, spe specific requirements besides um, generosity, interest, and um, empathy. So um, um, I, I, I guess I get excited about the opportunity to let groups of people come together in that way. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's that's really that's very interesting and helpful. Thank you for the question, Jen. Um, other questions or thoughts about something you just saw? Yes, please. Hi, I'm Maggie. <laughs> nice to meet you. Jackie, uh, can you hear her? Hey. Uh, hey, I can come over there. Yeah, why don't you go over there? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you, Jackie. Okay, I'm sure I'm uh, their performance. <laughs> um, so my question is, is that um, although this deals with, and in the title, it's very much about the specific historical occurrence which you are kind of dealing with, but to me it felt like a very American play, mm -hmm. and it felt like a lot of times, especially because of kind of the conceit in which you wrote it, it dealt with a lot of American, inherently American issues. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if that was something that you... I'm sure it's something you took into consideration, but exactly how that kind of came into the process as you kind of, as it kind of unfolded through the writing of it. Because you mm -hmm. kind of started with the nugget of the idea, but then it kind of took on something else, so. Great, thank yeah. you. Keep doing what you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think that I definitely, um, once I, once, once this other layer, uh, I, I um, I, or I'm very aware of the fact that for someone that is really interested in finding out something about the Herrero, that this is an incredibly disappointing play. <laughs> <laughs> you actually learn more from the Wikipedia page, actually. So um, the uh, and I and I also um, as I was sort of swerving into this, um, whatever that the thing that you saw is um, that I, I was. Uh, hyper aware of um, the fact that in some ways I was uh, just like using their story to tell a, a different story. Like I, I was, um, 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 yeah, like it was like, it, it could be seen as incredibly offensive to sort of, um, to, to boil someone's, um, this like huge atrocity down to like an example of something and just sort of point at it and not investigate it. But I also think that, um, um, uh, that because I, because I'm not a historian or like this sounds sort of like a cop out and I don't mean it to be, but like, because I, um, I'm not a historian, I did a bunch of research about the Herrera, but I, what I just felt completely incapable of telling, um, without, uh, of, of, of creating a piece of theater that would somehow, um, speak for these people, um, and so I did feel like I was equipped to tell a story about, um, like, a, about America and contemporary race dynamics. And, um, and uh, so I, I sort of take solace in the fact that even though the play ultimately is not about Africa or about Namibia or about the Herrero um, specifically, that it, it is at least exposing people to that um, history. Um, and I've, uh, I've been, I've, I've got, had the chance to talk to a couple of, um, descendants of the Herrera who came to see various productions of the play, um, which was terrifying and, ex and incredibly exciting. Um, and, um, um, talking with, uh, one, one couple in particular and their children, they were just sort of excited that, um, it was, it was finding a way for, American people to connect to this story and to um, learn about it and then therefore be more interested in it and be, and be able to go out and sort of do some research about it and learn about it. Um, and so that that has been gratifying. Great, thank you. 
other question? Yes. Um, it's, it doesn't really have to do with the play as much. Do you want to come down and ask? Okay, yeah, you sure. can if you want to. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll do. We'll take another question in the meantime, but yeah. yeah well, I was going to ask, um, uh, a couple of the actors kind of use a southern accent. Was that like your choice, or, or how does that fold into kind of following up on the last question? Great. So this is a question about about the um, the accents and about how they how they move through the play. Summer, do you want to take that? So that's Jackie, right? In terms of the the drifting uh, into the American South um, and the the way she kind of sets us in this kind of netherworld all of a sudden between investigating the German and the Herrero situation mm -hmm. and doing that by way of exploring what the black-white dynamic is of the American South. Um, and then it's the, I think there's a really lovely kind of not identifiable finesse that happens in the moment mm -hmm. between those two actors as they begin to slip deeper and deeper into it, um, which kind of feels generous and, and organic and tells the story really well, but that's Jackie's genius. Yeah, Jackie, do you want to say anything uh, yourself about the about the shift in the accents that, that are indicated in the play? Oh, yeah, just that, um, 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 uh, do I, I'm sure I do want to say something. Um, <laughs> uh, do you want yeah, to, yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, do you want to, um, well, I think one of the questions is that we've had um, uh, a couple, at a couple of our post shows has to do with like where that happens and why. So I don't know if you want to talk about sort of your your thoughts about that. Ah, thank you. Alana, thank you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, it, it's, it, it happened, I think that ex like pinpointing exactly where it happens is something that is up to Summer and the performers. But um, the scene that it happens in um, is, is sort of this sort of lo longer form improv that gets a little murky between um, the, the, the black man actor and the white man actor. And it seems like, um, to me it happens there in a way because it's, uh, it's at a, a point in the play where the actors are committing more, um, um, are committing more to the process. Um, and that, that, that in terms of um, um, where, like how, that they're, how they're investing in the characters, it's coming from um, something that they're their own imagination rather than something that they have are, are, are trying to like fulfill externally. And so um, it's something that comes from inside rather than like pointing and trying to become something else. And so um, they, they, in my <laughs> crazy brain, they like sort of subconsciously, they like see the dynamic that they have, which is this black white dynamic and um, subconsciously and immediately layer onto it the most recognizable version of that black, white, hostile dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I think um, for those who haven't had a chance to um, read the interview in the program that Ramona did with Jackie, um, Jackie, you say something in that interview about how you your, yourself um, felt a similar kind of recognition when you were looking at photographs um, of some of the Herrero who you, you saw documentary photographs of, of them hanging. And that you made a um, a connection yourself to um, to the American South. So it's interesting to me that uh, I think night to night our actors also have to navigate that exact thing that you were just talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Jesse, do you want to come up and yeah. ask a question? So this is Jesse. He's one of our actors. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you so much for this piece. It was uh, a ton of fun to do. I can speak for everybody else. We had a blast, and it was uh, such a huge learning experience as an actor. And all that. Uh, now I'm done buttering you up. Um, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was wondering, I, I, I was actually, it doesn't have anything to do with the play, but just um, my, my interest in, in you as a, as a writer. Um, so I, I like to write a lot, uh, and I know that like, I'm constantly reading, and I'm sure you are too. So I'm just wondering if you're reading anything right now that you would like to recommend. Not necessarily like, oh, this is how you do a better writer, but like, I don't know, a cool novel that you're up to, or like anything like that. Like, I'm always looking for this stuff to read. <laughs> That's it. That's my question. <laughs> Runs away. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're very scary. <laughs> um, I try to be scary. Uh, um, yeah, no, it's, this is so embarrassing. Like, I just, I, uh, I have like actually not been reading lately. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, sad balloon. Um, but, uh, um, I, I have 
I guess I've just been rereading um, some Carol Churchill plays. Yeah, awesome. She's awesome. Totally. Um, and what about, what's the last thing that I've been reading that I, oh, I guess, oh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, don't just say anything except for the internet. Don't say <laughs> the internet. But, um, I, 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 um, recently was looking at, um, or I, cause I've been reading for, um, projects more than pleasure. Um, but, uh, there's this uh, graphic novel that's written by this dude whose name I am not going to remember, um, but it's called Safe Area Garage Day, and it's about um, 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 this area <laughs> during the Bosnian genocide. I'm just like, I'm just like reading about genocide. <laughs> my, my, yeah. But um, I'd never <laughs> read a graphic novel before, and it was it completely blew my mind in this wow. cool. wonderful. Safe area what? Right. That's it's like a uh, Bosnian word. It's like G O R A Z with a thingy on it. Okay. Okay. Um, e. Okay, so it's like, cool. It's okay. like garage day. Okay, gotcha. All right, I'm gonna check that out. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, no, so I just that was, this is this is embarrassing. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Um, Jackie, this might be a, a nice time for me to ask you, um, what are the projects you're working on right now? What like I know that this play took up so much of your artistic and psychic space for so long, um, <laughs> right? So, yes. uh, what? Where are you going next? What's the next thing on your horizon? Um, well, I've I've been working on um, a play that yet another play that is broken, but I don't know why. <laughs> um, that uh, I've been calling really, 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 really. That um, <laughs> is about. Um, um, photography and uh, uh, memory and grief. Um, and so I guess, yeah, for that, I've been reading like a bunch of like photography theory books, like um, Camera Lucida by Roland yeah. Bart and um, uh, Regarding the Pain of Others and also on Photography by Susan Sontag mm -hmm. um, uh, and other stuff. And uh, so I've, I've been working on that, but then I've also been working on a play um, sort of about beauty bloggers and girls on the internet. Um, so I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, um, which is exactly what I didn't want to admit to you guys. <laughs> lots and lots of YouTube videos. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be doing a reading of that um, at the end of the month um, at a uh, New York Theater Workshop. Um, so I, I, I've been sort of working on that. Um, but then I guess the biggest thing is, um, that uh, my my husband is, I'm pointing because I am in an apartment and he is in, <laughs> uh, but he is a, 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 an anthropology, an anthropologist. He's getting his PhD um, and uh, he's doing field work in, in an area um, sort of south of Morocco that's called Western Sahara. And um, he's gonna, we're, we're both gonna move there for like, a while, <laughs> trying to sound artsy and nomadic. I don't know, we're just gonna go to Morocco. <laughs> just drop out, man, for a little while. Um, and so I, I, I have I have some books on um, uh, women uh, who traveled to Morocco, um, which is part of the reason that I'm rereading Carol Churchill, because in Top Girls, there's one of the characters is Isabella Bird, who's a, um, a, like a, a 18th, 19th century British aristocrat who traveled to Morocco mm. by herself. Um, and a bunch of books on Islam and feminism that I have not read and have just been sitting in a stack, like glaring at me. <laughs> you feel unsuccessful. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna be researching a play um, there um, uh, next month through um, wow. the end of the summer. So wow. I'm pretty excited about that. I think we have time for maybe one or two more uh, questions or comments. Yes, right here. I'll come, Fabulous, I love I'll, this. I'll come say hello. Hi, my name is Andrea. Um, okay, so first of all, thank you so much for the work. It was uh, moving and stupendous and difficult and thought-provoking, all kinds of things. So I'm really grateful, thank you. Um, so some of the things that I noticed, that I'm, I'm just finding myself sitting and mulling over, and also as a writer, I know that if I had the opportunity to hear what somebody was left with, that I might appreciate it, so I thought I would just kind of spit them out. Great. Okay. So, 
So one of the things that I loved was when one of the characters talked about, you know, took on the persona of the, the grandmother in relation to the image that mm -hmm. the other actors saw and talked about that you can't walk in somebody else's shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was very acute to me, carefully watching how that character transformed into a perpetrator of sorts. Yeah. And then I felt like that was kind of dropped. And then we watched all of the characters become either perpetrators or victims of okay. sorts. And I was just, I was struck with two things. One of them is that in my, my deepest heart, I hope and I believe and all of my work is predicated on this notion that there are a small percentage of humans, the species that we are, that actually are able to look at and be accountable and say no. Hmm. And I found it really interesting that you left that out. Huh. And so that as we watch the actors workshop and improvise themselves into a place where they were in fact walking in what they imagined someone else's shoes to be, mm -hmm. that that option wasn't a part of the palette at all. Yeah. And I just wondered what your thinking might have been about that. That's a great and question. Thank you so much for this opportunity to ask you. Oh, thank you for asking. That's a really, um, yeah, that's an incredibly interesting and generous question. I, um, I, I, it's, and I wanna give it as, as, as like thought, as thoughtful an answer as the question was, that was not, the grammar was really bad. <laughs> so I don't know what I mean. Um, where I, I think that, uh, 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 it's interesting. It, we're like, um, in, in reading about genocide or like thinking about genocide, a big part of it, I'm, and I, and it, it's, it's, it feels ridiculous to me to pretend that I'm some sort of expert on genocide, but I'm, we're just going to roll with that for a second, <laughs> um, but uh, that that it seems like it's 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 not about like one evil person making a decision to be evil. It's obviously like a communal. Um, a, a, everyone in a society is implicated in the extermination of another of, of a section of that society. That's just um, so. It, it's to me there there is no there is no no if you're a part of something that is. Um, like a part of a system of oppression in that way. Right. Um, but I also think like on a, in a very, very different way, um, like so much about the, the, the art of performance and the art of theater is about never saying no to anything. Yeah. Like, so that's like, I mean, down, but not down. I love improv, but I'm making it sound like it's, but that, that like the people say it super ironically and with like kind of an eye roll of like, you play yes and. So your collaborator comes into a room and they're asking you to do something that you think is wrong and stupid, but you don't say that, you say yes. And and try to add to instead of, and, um, and I think that that's, I think that as, um, as scary as complicity is in a system of oppression, I think that um, uh, 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 um, investment and, um, and sort of like openness is beautiful in theater. Like, or I, I, I think that there's something interesting about complicity and this yes andness of live performance and of the audience. Like, you uh, of of suspending your disbelief and all of this stuff. There's a lot of. Um, I, I think it's like an interest. I don't know. I'm not trying to draw some sort of relationship or a one to one, but I think that they sort of those things sit together, and so it just felt right to. Uh, to not have anyone say no or stop until play breaks. Yeah. Um, Jackie, just so you know, um, we've definitely had uh, some conversations after um, performances where audience members have spoken about their own complicated feelings in those final moments um, when, uh, when Mark is walking around the space and asks and sort of trying to speak those final lines and not speaking them, um, that audience members have reported feeling torn as to whether they are um, being asked in that moment to still suspend their disbelief and be in a play, or whether that moment is a real human moment uh, that is happening you know, sort of in real life at that exact second. 
and I think one of the um, things that I appreciate most about your writing and about the structure that you create and about the world that um, Summer and Ramona and the actors have created in that room is that those things are inseparable in many ways. Um, that the, the, the complex quality of am I an audience member in a play or am I a human being having a relationship to another human being sitting in front of me and how much of this is real and how much of this is about the event. Um, that those things are not, uh, you can't decouple them in a way. And I think, so I just, I wanna say thank you to you for creating a space that is asking us as artists and, and producers, collaborators, audience members to um, investigate how that feels. Because I don't think we, have, we often have a chance to do that. Um, so I wanna say thank you about that. <laughs> Um, and I am sorry to report that we are at time for this event, um, but uh, I, Jackie, thank you so very much for um, your, uh, your time and um, your generosity in being part of this conversation with us, even while you are in the midst of great dental pain. Uh, <laughs> and thank you to our audience um, for being here and our actors. Uh, do you want to say something? Is that? No, we're just going to come down. And oh, say hi. great. And if you want to hang out on the computer for a minute, Jackie, the actors are going to come say hi for a second. But um, audiences, thank you so much for being with us, and we hope you uh, come back and join us again. Thank you, live stream. And uh, if anybody wants to come up and ask uh, Summer or Ramona oh, any questions, oh, feel free. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry to not have gotten to see you guys today. Okay. Uh, but I'm, 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 I'm so excited. This is so weird. Hi. 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 I'm obsessed with you. I had to say it out loud. I've said it several times. I'm not ashamed to say it to your face. Am I still on the big screen or am I only on the little screen? Hold on. I'm going to take you away. Hold on. Take her off the <laughs> there we go. Okay. Hold on. Hold on, Jay. There we go. Okay. Jesse, now you're off the screen. Thank you. <laughs>